how did you meet Brent Grimes, your husband? Um, I met him because, like I said, I was hosting a lot of football camps. When I was doing the radio show, it was in Atlanta, the city that he um, played for at the time. And um, uh, I met a bunch of the guys on the football team just from going out. I was out probably every night around that time. You know, I had just broken up with my boyfriend and I was single and I was in a new city and I was just like, you know what, I'm just about to get out and turn up, have fun. I met a whole bunch of football players and all of them were just kind of talk. Most guys that I meet, honestly, they, they try to sleep with me at first, of course. And then when they start talking to me, they treat me like a guy, like a dude, like one of the, their homies. And so, you know, I befriended a whole bunch of guys on the teams and when they had um, football camps, they would hire me to host it because I was like a one-man band. Like I could record it, I could do the interviews, I edit, I put together a disc for them to give to create more sponsors for the next year type of thing. Mm -hmm. And so I guess when that happened, they were just like, oh my God, one of the homies said you were cute. Like he doesn't really talk much, you know what I'm saying? He doesn't say anything, but you know, I want to hook you guys up. And I was like, well, who is he? You know, and they was like, oh, his name is Brent Grimes. And I was like, who is that? I covered the team. I don't know who that is. I don't really, <laughs> I was like, is he on the team? They're like, yeah, he's on the practice squad though, but he's coming up, like he's really good. He just doesn't get any playing time. And I was like, oh, okay. So I Googled him and I was like, is he white? And they were like, kind of, yeah. Yeah, he is white, he's white, but he has some black in there too. And I was like, nah, nah, I don't do white boys. You know, I'm cool. And they were just like, no, you should give him a chance. Like he's not like the rest of us. And I was like, oh, you know, like a group of not shit men are saying he is not like them. So I was like, maybe I should, you know, give it a try. And so I was like, all right, well, you know, this guy was having a birthday party and I was like, I'll come to your birthday party, invite him. And they were like, he doesn't go to clubs. And I was like, well, how is he gonna meet me? And they were like, we're gonna tell him to come, whatever. I'm like, all right. So he came to the club and that's how we met. Was it love at first sight? I don't know, not for me. Only because I was so drunk. <laughs> And I was dating somebody at the time, not really, it was like just some dude I was sleeping with, having fun with, not serious, but you know, I was having a good time being single. You know, so I wasn't really looking for anything, but you know, he, I cracked some jokes on him about being short and he took them so well that it kind of made me like, oh my God, like he might be able to handle me. You know, so we exchanged numbers and you know, three weeks into it, I dumped him. He wasn't talking to me. I thought he was gay, cause it was Atlanta, you know? And I'm just like, he's not talking. He's not even trying to kiss me. He's not trying to fuck me. He's not trying to do anything. He just wants to be around me every day. And, and I'm just like, what is this? Like, what is going on? And I was like, I'm off him. And they were like, no, he's not gay. He's not any of that. He's just very quiet. He just doesn't talk. Like, just try to get him out of his element. He's cool. And so I eventually um, got him out of his element, started talking to him and we've never separated since. We've literally, he asked me to move in everything like it went so fast like can't even believe it how did his family um take to you to this day they still hate me <laughs> oh my god to why this day um brent wanted um how do i put this he doesn't have a lot of friends he doesn't hang out with anybody he wanted a girl that he could hang out with he wanted a girl that would go to his games. He wanted a girl that was always around. I had three jobs at that time. I had a radio show, I was doing sideline reporting, and I worked at, at night at a sports bar bartending. I was a hustler. So I would come home, I would cook for him, but I'd be right back out the door doing stuff, doing stuff, doing stuff. And, and he was going through some things with the team not playing him and him on the bench. And he needed somebody there to talk to him, to say it's gonna be all right, like keep motivating him. And, you know, and I just wasn't there. I was working, working, working. And I was like, you know what? This, if that, this is what it's gonna take, like I'm willing to do this. Like I wanna be there. Whenever he doesn't play and he's upset, I'm gonna be right there. When he comes home from practice, I wanna be right there. And so I kind of gave up everything to be a housewife, but there was a stipulation with that. You know, I wanted to see the finances. I wanted to see what was coming in and what was going out because if I quit all my shit, I need to know that we're gonna be okay. Yeah. And so when I took a look at the finances and realized that he was getting robbed by his own family, I kind of had to step in and say, these aren't good things to do. These aren't your responsibilities. 
you already don't make a lot of money. People think when you're in the NFL, you're a millionaire. No, he was making league minimum, like maybe $200,000 before taxes. You know, and I was just like, you got to not pay everybody's bills. I know this is your family. I know this, but we're, we're not going to have anything if you keep doing this. And so I came in and kind of cut everybody off, basically, is why I think they hate me the most. You know, and then it happened really fast. It was too soon for everybody, and I get it. My family didn't really accept him at first either. He's too young. We have a large age difference, and he's a football player. All you hear is football players beating their wives and cheating and, you know, doing all this crazy stuff. And so we just decided that since both sides really didn't fuck with us like that, we eloped. <laughs> Where? Vegas. Oh, wow. He had never been to Vegas. So I took him to Vegas, and um, I had this really pretty chapel. It was so beautiful. It was a real chapel. I had a real wedding dress. He had a real suit, tuxedo, everything. Who were your witnesses? My best friend <laughs> and her boyfriend. That's it. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so um, I took him down that, that street where all those little drive through chapels were. He wanted to see them all. He's like, oh, I want to see these. Ch I've heard about them. We had just seen The Hangover the year before it just came out. And we went to that chapel and they said, yeah, this is where The Hangover was filmed. This is where Michael Jordan got married. But he was like, let's get married here. And I was like, no, I have a real wedding dress. No. And he was like, I'm going to give you a wedding, a real one one day. Let me have this one. And so my best friend was like, he's right, Miko. Let him have it. Let him have this. He goes, I want to wear a t-shirt with a tuxedo on it. You know, like just have fun with it. Yeah. And I was like, fuck it, all right. I mean, you said that his friends were, his teammates were very um, honest, and they said that he wasn't like them. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, everyone knows about the groupies. Yes. So how was it dealing with groupies and um, being his girl? <laughs> because Brent is so quiet and doesn't, you know, I used to argue with him early on in our relationship because he didn't even return my phone call sometimes. Like he didn't return my text messages. I would be calling him saying, hey, I'm on the way home. Is there anything special you want to eat for dinner? You know, and he would not respond. So I would go to the store, hit him again, hit him again, hit him again. I come home and I'm like, hello. And he's like, I don't have my phone on me 24 seven. Like I'm not gonna respond to you like I'm playing video games. So it kind of makes it hard for the groupies to get to him, believe it or not, mm. because he doesn't really, um, he only cares about video games, honestly. You know what I mean? Like, he obviously wants pussy, but he's so focused on other things that, you know, there are groupies, there are women, there are, you know, they come, but they can't keep his attention because he really doesn't have any focus for them. Mm -hmm. So I think I've had it pretty easy for the most part, you know, easier than my friends that I hear the stories, yeah. you know, but for the most part, I didn't have to deal with a lot of shit that a lot of women had to deal with because my husband's not on social media because he doesn't pick up his phone regularly. Like for anyone, let alone me, like you're not getting a call back, bitch. Like he doesn't pick up for me, you know what I mean? So I can't really attest to all those stories because I didn't really go through a lot of bad stuff. There was some, some shit, but nothing to where I even have any issue with him whatsoever. Yeah, like, did, was there any time, well, I mean, you trust him, but was there any time that you had to check a girl that was trying too hard? Oh yeah, I um, there was one girl um, from college, um, Ponzi. Let's say her name, Ponzi Smith. She um, she beat up a bunch of his girlfriends growing up. Like she's just a little bully kind of girl, and you know, Philly girl or whatever. And um, she decided one day that she wanted to get on uh, Twitter and start tweeting me, talking shit to me, calling me ugly, calling him ugly, call talking about um the fact that he doesn't claim a religion, like just coming for us. And I didn't know her name was Ponzi. I just knew her as Giselle. So Ponzi's her real name, but she goes by Giselle. And so as she's tweeting me, you know, I'm seeing all these tweets, I'm seeing all these tweets, and I'm like, who is this person? Because they obviously know us. She never said who she was. She was just saying stuff that made me think she knows him for sure, like really, really well since he was a kid. And then um, when he got home from practice, I showed him the tweets and I was like, who is this bitch? I wanna, I wanna attack her. And he was like, oh, that's Giselle. And I was like, Giselle. And he's like, yes. So I pulled up his computer. Giselle sent him a lot of nudes. So I pulled up his computer and I just responded to every tweet with one of her nudes. Did you get sued for that? No. 
<laughs> what did she say? She deleted her Twitter. Oh man, and she never like never ever said anything else to me again. Oh wow. So you play hard. Play very hard. <laughs> yes. That was probably the only person that's ever come at me about my husband. That's it. And she, that was it. That was it. Well, I haven't had any other women ever approach me whatsoever, nothing ever, ever, ever. Does that mean there was no bitches? No. <laughs> but no one's ever approached me and I think that's pretty smart of them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I definitely wouldn't want mine to up. I said, that's crazy. Um, so do you hang out with other football wives? Is there um, like is there like that is there like a click? Mm -hmm. And then okay. Yeah, well when I was just his girlfriend, I had to beat up a couple uh, I'm gonna say a couple, but there was two girls I had to beat up um in Atlanta because um they didn't they, they treat you different when you're a girlfriend. They talk to you recklessly. They, they, they smirk and kiki and, and whisper, you know what I'm saying, when you walk by when you're a girlfriend because you're nothing at that point, you know. But And they were I, actual football wives. Yes, mm -hmm. but I, I demand respect. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'll verbally demand it, and if it gets any further than that, where we get into any type of back and forth and banter and you get in my face, I'm probably going to pop you because I don't know what you're going to do. When you approach me and get in my face, my natural reaction is to defend myself. Mm -hmm. So I had to defend myself a couple times. And I gained some respect from some of them that way. And then when I became a wife, I decided that I'm going to befriend all the girlfriends. I don't care how long you've been with them. I don't care. It's not a threat to me. I don't see any of them as a threat. I want to get to know people for who they are. And... I don't care if you, how long you've been with somebody. If you're a good person, you're a good person. I'm still friends with some girlfriends that aren't even with the guy they were with before. Mm -hmm. But they're good people. You know, so there's there's this thing called, you know, there's the wives and there's the girlfriends and there's just a big split. When I, when I went to Miami, it was like that. And so I wasn't accepted by the wives um, when I went to Miami. As a wife, I was called um, a lot of names. And... Um, so I decided, you know, then too, all the girlfriends loved me. So we had our own crew. We were called the Misfits. <laughs> and none of them were married. And, you know, the wives talked about them. Oh, they're, they're um, shacking up, you know. They, they didn't want them to come to Bible study because they weren't wives. I'm like, so you can't praise the Lord because you don't have a ring? <laughs> Since when? If you have a kid out of wedlock, you're not allowed to come and, and pray with us? But weren't they once girlfriends? Exactly. <laughs> Fucking hypocrites. Like, knock it off. I'm sure all of you fucked your man before you married him. None of you lived directly by the Bible. So who are you? Who do you think you are? Mm -hmm. You know, so I kind of stirred up some shit with that. And, you know, I don't care. But that's just how I am. Like, everyone should be able to come to Bible study. Everyone should be able to participate in our charity events. They live with this man. Mm -hmm. Just because they're not married doesn't mean they're not a part of what we're doing. You know, and why wouldn't you want more hands? Why wouldn't you want more people to pray with and talk about, you know, religion and trying to live right? Like, you're shady. Did your relationship with the NFL kind of affect your relationship with the women as well after you started being more vocal? Yes. Well, because a lot of the guys didn't, you know, I, I, I understand this, and a lot of the guys were afraid for their wives to be associated with me because... When you talk the shit that I talk, you can get kicked off your team. Mm -hmm. My husband has never been kicked off the team for the things that I've said. Okay. Let's be clear. He left Miami because we wanted to leave. I said some things to get him out of his contract. We wanted to leave. Mm -hmm. They did not want him to leave. I knew that if I kicked up enough shit, they would, they would let him go. Now, was that the Jew remark? No, 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 no. That, the Jew remark actually happened in July. The things that I said happened around December, January, March, some of the things that I said. But um, they wanted my husband to stay there and take a pay cut, though. And it's like, no, if you're going to pay him what his contract says, then we'll stay. Otherwise, we would like to leave. And they tried to bully him and threaten him with certain things saying what they could do to him to make him stay for a pay cut. And we weren't rolling. I definitely wasn't rolling. So I did what only a true down ass wife would do. I laid on a sword. I took the heat to get my husband out of a contract that he didn't want to be in. 
Mm -hmm. Simple. People can call me whatever they want to call me, but the Miami Dolphins asked my husband to match his contract once he got the contract with the Bucks. They asked him to still stay. So for someone to say, I got him kicked off the team, sounds stupid to you, right? If a team says, can we match that offer? What does that mean? They want you to stay. It's not because of me, because he could have said, all right, I'll stay. Match the offer, we'll stay. And then what? Would I have been the cancer then? I would have, I would have still been a part of the team. What did you say exactly that made people assume that you were the, responsible for him leaving? I said that the quarterback was trash and the whole team agrees with me. It's the truth. Mm -hmm. It's not a lie. And when I say the whole team, I think I can count one person, one person on the team. And I'm not saying everyone told me he was trash. Mm -hmm. No one disagreed. Only one person I've ever heard on that team disagreed with me. He's not on the team anymore. One. So he's trash. They don't want anybody to know that everyone knows. Everybody knows, though. If you look at Sports Center, everyone's talking about how trash he is. But the team doesn't want anybody else to say it. Mm -hmm. So I said it. I talked about how they, they lie about things, how they act like they care about the family. They don't. They act like they care about the women. They don't. They act like they care about concussions. They don't. You know, I just started basically saying all the stuff that everybody knows, but nobody says. Mm -hmm. And then I pointed a finger at a specific organization. What do you think about the whole situation? Man, my point of view, man, I really feel like they tried to paint a, a bad picture on my brother and tried to make him look like, like he was a hater. Uh, it was some envy, jealousy type shit, you know what I'm saying? And actuality, you know what I'm saying? Bro, been having this shit, man. He been in the condo. I got my hat on and I had my Coke bottles up under my hat. And I'm sitting at the dinner table like an asshole with the hat on, knowing she's gonna tell me to take it off. And I'm just sitting there just gawping down, you know, in my zone. She said, take that goddamn hat off at the dinner table. I'm like, come on, mom. Coat everywhere. 